I'm gonna say they are a big boss and have solid taste. My playlist is growing like crazy and I'm running out of space. Thank you, GDQ staff and gamers, for all that you do. I agree. Yeah, that's a good soundtrack. Listen, our audio team, they're great. They're amazing, okay? They know what they're doing. And they're going to make sure they're giving you the bangers that you need to get you through this marathon. Because, of course, you're watching 24-7 for seven days straight, right? Right? Yeah. At least the FODs. I mean, come on. We have a $25 donation from Grandmaster Scoo. Only my fifth or sixth GDQ event. I've been watching on and off all week so far and fighting through a migraine. But today is a day off work and I couldn't miss some of those upcoming runs for the life of me. Good luck, runners, and let's break one million raised for charity. We're going to break a million today. We're going to do it. And speaking of really awesome things that are going to happen very soon... That was an excellent segue on my part. Thank you so much, me. Uh, we are ready for the Lumion race with Ellipsis and Breakdown. Take it away. All right, then. What's going on, GDQ? My name is Breakdown. Hey, this is Ellipsis. And back here on the couch, we got Clage holding Yo. down the commentary. But uh, yeah, we're going to be racing some Lumion today. Really, really fun precision platformer. Most of you probably never heard of it. We're going to change that today. Hope you're interested in checking it out. But I think uh, we're ready when you are here. Yeah, I want to say before we get started, at least for, for my part of this, I'm going to pledge $10 a death. And just for some context, uh, the world record has 23 deaths in it, and it only goes up from there. So it could get spendy at $10 a day. Definitely could. Definitely could. So I don't know. Maybe you get the magical deathless run. Maybe yeah. You do. That would be the dream. All right, then. Well, I guess uh, get this thing started. Clay, do you want to count us down here? Yeah. You two ready? I mean, get to the oh. skip. The, oh. Because I was going to. Ah, you're going to go from there. Huh? Yeah. I see. All right, then. Get some lore. Okay, then. All right, count us down. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. All right, so Lumion, precision tile platformer. If you've played things like Celeste, you're going to see a lot of uh, borrowed mechanics and ideas from games like that. Right now, what we have is Glimmer. Glimmer is our friendly little fairy. They are trying to bring light back to the world of fairies, so they're going to navigate horrible platforms, tons of spikes, and other problems to make that happen. So right now, Glimmer can only run and jump very quickly. Glimmer will be getting the core ability that they have access to, they're going to get a dash. Because what's a precision platformer if you can't do air dashes? Also, this is, in fact, a new game run. You are allowed to skip cutscenes in this game, because thank you, devs. We appreciate it. All right, and we're going into chapter one. The dash is active now. So some basic game mechanics for everyone. Glimmer gets one jump and one dash. Anytime Glimmer interacts with any interactable object on the screen, their dash usually comes back. There are weird exceptions to this here and there, but the name of the game is navigate the screen, not run into spikes, not fall down in the death pits, and keep going. So um, some other important things to know about Lumion is this game has a very unique uh, design behind its hitboxes. The hitboxes are all hand-drawn. And this creates some very interesting opportunities for these two runners to abuse that fact and do things you ought not to be doing with spikes and other things. And we'll get to that when we get to it. But yeah, every, every little nook and cranny you see in the walls and the floors, all those sorts of things, those are all hand-drawn. They do, in fact, alter how Glimmer interacts with them. You're about to see the first of those interactions coming up here. So that's a wall of spikes down there right below that star. Oh, and they will kill you. As yeah, they will. There. Just like that. We're jumping into spikes for fun. As there move. it is. Oof, there it is. A spicy pickup. Lipsix gets it really? first. Really? So there are a lot of spikes in this game that these two runners like to colloquially call vegan spikes. And there are different flavors of vegan spikes in Lumion. Uh, what you're seeing there are what they like to refer to as time release spikes. Basically, if you jump on very specific portions of those hand-drawn hitboxes and you immediately jump on the first frame you land, you can jump off those. Now, 
to be clear, that's not actually a just frame trick. Uh, there is a buffer in Lumion. These two runners can hit the jump button somewhere around four to five frames, they think, before they land, and it will go ahead and give them the jump on the first frame. And that buffer is very, very handy. So Ellipsis starting out a little ahead here has gotten to a new mechanic. You saw the giant blue laser beams. Those are water pressure. Uh, don't run into those. They hurt. So there are four chapters in Lumion. The difficulty varies throughout them. These runners will mostly tell you that chapter three is probably the most difficult chapter, but chapter four is definitely where things can turn on its head. Right now, Ellipse is using a nice little skip here to go up between the gap. I'm gonna fall down. And you'll notice Glimmer's dash has a lot of little interesting quirks to it. Um, if you dash straight up, and I mean dead north, you cannot be going anywhere angled anyway whatsoever. Uh, Glimmer gets a lot of extra height on the dash, which is very important for escaping certain rooms in ways that were probably not totally intended. And I am required by these two gentlemen to inform you all that that true north dash that gets the extra height has a very technical term, and that term is boosty poo. There's reverse boosty poo right there to accelerate the fall speed. Uh, yep, boosty poo is definitely a technical term. It is, extremely. There are no boosts in this game, only boosty poos. See Ellipsis navigating lanes there. Now we're going to do a little climbing and up. Everyone the donated for these stars, so yes, we're going to collect them all. That is correct. We are running 100%. The 100% category for Lumion is collecting the only collectible, which are those stars. They're scattered throughout every chapter, uh, very similar to the strawberries in Celeste, but they're not terribly hidden. Uh, it's more of a. This room is now way more difficult because you got to get this star. Chapter one actually has the most difference between any percent and hundred percent yep. due to these side rooms. Yeah, in most of the chapters, the stars are just kind of along the way. You'll have to, you'll have to go somewhere in the room you probably wouldn't need to in any percent. But in chapter one, they actually have to do extra rooms just to collect the stars. They are actually hidden off to the side in multiple areas. The little bubbles you're seeing Glimmer run into when they climb around here, those are a refresh on the dash. So if Glimmer has dashed, uh, the dash refreshes. Once they go through there, they get another dash to utilize. And like I said, pretty much any interactable, the stars do not count. The stars do not refresh Ooh. your dash, unfortunately. Um, you will get your dash back. So these, uh, the water beams here have a lot of opportunity for little optimizations if they can perfectly time some cycles you see break down there trying to time this one should be clear here this room is what they like to call best best practice there we this cycle skip is getting this on the first cycle very 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 precise yeah so and as ellipsis mentioned uh 23 deaths in the world record of this category there will be deaths in this run as you've already seen this is an incredibly difficult platformer so now we're reaching the chase sequence uh there is a very large octopus in the background that has glimmer quite terrified so glimmer is going to try to head out of here asap and we get some nice little chase music here Honestly, a very close chapter one so far. That's the vegan buffet right there. You can just fly into those spikes. Yep. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of times where Glimmer oh. jumps on spikes and uh, just doesn't die. Like right here. Oh, Not ready quite. for the vegan surprise. Yep. And that was part two that we discovered this morning. Yeah, so this room, once they get to it, uh, this was tech that was literally discovered this morning in the practice room. If we can get the first part. <laughs> really? All right. All right, we're going old school. Or not. <laughs> I'm just going to take the first part of it. I believe. Nope. Nope, nope. Opt there we go. the safer out there. Break down through, ellipsis through. As you can tell, some of the rooms in Lumion are very long, so a death in some of these longer rooms is obviously much more costly. Um, there's some there's some pretty brutal spots late in, room, late in rooms that can really uh, give these runners a sad, so. 
Oh my goodness. All right, gets past that jet. Gain a little bit of time there, very nice. Kaizo Mario stuff right there. Uh, we are All almost right. dead even here. Let me take a sec to say that last screen in chapter one has no business in the first level of any. No, <laughs> no, it is it is brutal. I think my first time took me like two hours. Just it is to get a through wall that. in the casual playthrough. It, yeah. All right, so we're going to move on to chapter two. Lumion changes up the mechanics consistently, even within its own chapters. Uh, the mechanic here, you're going to see the red beams and the yellow beams. Yellow is good. Glimmer can use that to get around the level. Uh, don't touch red. You'll die. These, uh, these beams here with the spikes on top are basically one-way streets. Glimmer can dash through those and go through the spikes unharmed. Uh, if Glimmer hits the actual spikes on the side they're on, then not so much. And these little, these little items that both runners are gathering are effectively keystones. They have to gather all of those to open the doors, be able to escape the room. And there's a couple spike jumps. Very, very nice from Breakdown. Utilizing those vegan spikes. And then we have a new mechanic, Ooh, the little barely. orbs, where you can direct Glimmer into and out of. And then here we reach a unique part of the game in Chapter 2, where you actually get to choose which way you want to go. You have to complete both of these sides, left and right. The runners choose to go left uh, because. Yep, for reasons. I think the left side is harder, so if I'm going to lose my run, I'd rather do it earlier. There you go. Yeah, this room that Breakdown is in uh, is a trick that Ellipsis has discovered to speed up the room, and it's called the Perfect Harp. Really? Yeah. Or if you do it... That was like a harp. There you go, Ellipsis. Harp -ish. got it. Harp-ish. Harp-ish. Harp-like. Harp, -ish. harp, harp, harp Imperfect harp. There you go. Just going to make me relearn trick names on the fly. It's only perfect if you get it the first try. That's fair. So now uh, we are adding another wrinkle to the red beams and the white beams. There are these little lamps uh, scattered throughout the levels now. Grabbing onto the lamp will initiate a switch. The yellow will turn red and vice versa. And all the objects that you'll see Glimmer grab onto, including the walls and all this, that is something Glimmer has to do. These interactables, like the lamps, have to be hit with the grab button. Glimmer will not act automatically activate them just by passing oh. through them. So Breakdown making his way through a whole lot of spikes. Turns on the lamp, good little bounce. Boosty poo up and we're out. And there is actually a trick we don't want to see for these two runners in this section is that if you actually hit the lamp and release and do a just frame grab on it, it uh, doesn't actually reverse the polarities, and that's not what you want, because you're not going to be able to complete the stage. You will have a sad. So, breakdown getting a nice rhythm here, getting through rooms really clean. Ellipsis not far behind at all. This, uh, this race is not remotely a race until these two get to chapter four. That is when we will have a race. There are some big tricks coming up in chapter three and four that I would say are run killers under normal circumstances. You can get them on the first try, or you could blow up five or six times. So breakdown is finished with the left side. Going to go to the right now, and ellipsis finishing up as well. So still incredibly close. So again, for how difficult this game is for this race to be this close right now is quite good. Scene skip. Nice little optimization there from Breakdown to not get caught on the lip. Again, any little lip or, or jutting out of any platform or any wall, that affects Glimmer. You can get caught on those. It actually also affects Glimmer when they cling to the wall. Uh, some of the, the walls have little nooks and crannies in them, and it actually affects how well Glimmer can grip onto it. Uh, they just refer to these as slippery walls, and there are times where they don't want them to be slippery. So, new mechanic now for Breakdown, adding in to the rest of the red beam, uh, yellow beam mechanic. The giant spinny orb here will change the polarity of whatever it's touching, and what's going to happen is a lot of these like to move around. You have to follow it to be able to get through the obstacles. So, Breakdown going to follow that back. Whatever it touches turns yellow. It is safe to use. And we're out. Same thing. Have to chase the orb up to be able to get through the gate. 
We do this room slightly differently, but it doesn't matter because we have to wait for the bubble. Yeah, you will notice slight deviations in both these players' routes. In certain rooms, a lot of the rooms you're going to see very similar tactics. This is a long room in this I need section. That. <laughs> we do, in fact, need that. Good recovery, though. Fresh the dash, and good save. Well done. All right. right. Oh, the cold play death. There it was. Oh, it was all yellow. It was all yellow. Very unfortunate. All right, so breakdown is through the right side now. And breakdown is now in what we're going to call sepia tone town. Uh, the little light sections there, Glimmer has to get to within a certain amount of time. If all the color fades out of these rooms, turns to that uh, brown sepia tone, uh, Glimmer doesn't like that and just dies. Not Game up. forces us to speed run. Yes. Oh, oh so close. Yeah, breakdown, it, breakdown is attempting a one of the most difficult tricks in the run right now, uh, which is referred to as weapons grade dumb. We have fun trick names in Lumion. Yep. It's really why I started running this game, name some tricks. So only went for it once. A lot of these more difficult tricks, you'll see these runners take one or two cracks at them. If they aren't able to get them, they'll go ahead and just do a more standard route because deaths are costly even in the short rooms. So uh, oh no, a lot of these tricks do save healthy amounts of time. But if you die three times doing it, that time becomes a very moot point. Yeah, no, hitting that trick saves like maybe three seconds, maybe three. Missing it loses like ten, so. But it looks so cool. It does look so cool, and I'm really sad I missed it for everybody, but. I mean, it's called Weapons Grade Dumb. You got, people want to see Weapons Grade Dumb. Yeah, well, set up. Start playing the game. You can do it yourself. There you go. Yeah. All right, so turning on all the lights, making sure the color doesn't fade out. So far. Breakdown has had a, a very clean chapter two for the most part, other than, than not getting the uh, really difficult trick. This has been a very solid chapter thus far. We ain't out yet. This room might have oh, something no. to say about yeah, it. No, the chapter two definitely backloads a lot of its difficulty. That is a unfortunate little bump of the dash. Yep. That's something, again, I'm going to remind you all, every hitbox in this game is hand-drawn. There we go. Which is an obscene labor of love from a game dev. That takes a ton of effort. And it can cause some headaches for these runners, but in the long run, it has opened up so many potential strategies and shortcuts that it's what really makes this an interesting speed game, in my opinion. All right, and Breakdown is in the final climb of Chapter 2. Looks like we're going to get out with about a 748. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Now the game starts. Yes. Now, now we are playing Lumion for real. Chapter 3 is a brutal. Uh, this chapter has yet to be done deathless by anyone that is known. Uh, no speedrunner nor casual player that... We know of on record has actually gotten through chapter three deathless, take, and uh, this one won't be either. Takes pressure off right out the gate. There you go. Oh, twice. Come on. This is the OG vegan spikes right here. Yeah. The first one. And there we there go. There we go. Very nice. Skips a cutscene down at the bottom. Very nice to do. Yeah. Even though missing that twice, obviously not what you want to do, still saved a healthy amount of time by hitting that. So in chapter three, right off the bat, we have a new mechanic. We have the D pad blocks. Uh, if Glimmer bounces off one of those, uh, they will get boosted that way. It also refreshes Glimmer's dash. But once you boost off one of the sides of the D-pad, that side disappears until you touch a different side of the D-pad. So you can't just repeatedly ride the up part or the right part, for example, to just speed through the level. I'll take second try on uh, OG vegan spikes. Yeah, not bad at all. around here and all these little little objects you see in between all these areas those are all spikes they will kill you way down getting pretty smooth honestly pretty solid start for both these players in chapter three little skip there yeah. happy to hit that first try yeah very nice uh, 
that up. Out. Ooh, just barely got clipped there. A little overzealous. The, uh, the interesting part of Chapter 3 for me is this music is so chill and so vibe, and this part of the game is very not either of those things. Back, get a key block, and we bounce, and we're out. This is also the point in the game where uh, the game is very allergic to allowing you to have floors. They are not particular fans of allowing you things to walk on. So now we're going to put another wrinkle into Chapter 3. Uh, these circles basically act as kind of a, a choose-your-own-adventure style cannon. You can point the arrow wherever Glimmer gets to launch out of it a decent distance and then also obviously gets the dash refle refreshed. Oh, we cook it. Nice. Wow. We that is it. a difficult, difficult room. Breakdown nails at first try. And they just whip a D-pad, but that's all right. That's fine. Yeah, no. Squeezing through a very small window in the spikes. So that was that was well done. Chapter 3 is also where the star collectibles start getting really, really obnoxious for these runners to get in any kind of uh, reasonable time. There's a couple of very rude stars in this chapter. We're not even to the worst ones yet. There's, there is a star where I cannot figure out what the intended strat was. Wow, Every time I get nice. that star, I feel like I've done something not intended because it can't be that hard, right? Another really pretty room from Breakdown in the room prior there. That was really beautiful. All right, I'm going to stop going for that. So there's a lot of very, very tiny windows that these uh, these orb cannons... Walls are suggestions. Yes, they very much are. This will be a neat trick to break down. Get it? Good. All right, sub 345 to here is pretty good. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, and vegan spikes, but nice, nice. chun -Li toe tap over the top there. Yep. Those ones on the corner there where there's just not quite full spike coverage, uh, these two like to refer to as the male pattern baldness spikes. Oh, oh just, just too barely. soon. Just too that is a That is a really tight angle that Breakdown is trying to uh, sneak through there. It saves a very healthy amount of time. There we go. Second try is not bad. Glimmer can jump with their forehead, which is a useful skill, but yes. show it off. There you go. Covered. So now we are going to combine the D-pad blocks and the Choose Your Own Adventure cannons into a dual mechanic. So now you can both pass through those and use the cannons. So this is a neat little trick. The uh, conch cells are basically uh, telescopes. They allow you to check out the entire level so you can see what horrors await you ahead. But interestingly enough, uh, if you jump while using the conch cell and then exit out of the conch cell and jump on what we believe has to be the first possible frame, uh, Glimmer gets a double jump. And for some places, it's a minor optimization. For a couple rooms, it's a big optimization. Very nice. Now this star, this star is the worst star in the game. Yes. But we have a cool trick for it. Oh, oh so close. Got so the close. hard part, botched the easy part. Yeah, just do it again. Oh, kind of need that. Do kind of need that. It is an all-stars run. Through the hard part. There we go. Hooray. Those spikes there are quite generous. You definitely get a lot more room on that platform than you think you would. Coming up on my vegan agenda strat, which is different than what Breakdown does this room. Looking for that right there. Yeah, nice. Very nice vegan spike okay. jump. One notable glitch that I would love to see fixed is uh, you notice a quick pause on pause there. The timer actually goes away, and we have yeah. to get it back. Quick pause on pause gets it back. But now we have Dream Blocks, Alice Celeste, but except we have full range of movement in them. Shout out to the vegan pixel right there. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, we get the Dream Blocks, and we get a little bit of Toho action here. Glimmer's going to have to fade some Bullet Hell. The cannons for the, the Bullet Hell are really interesting. When Glimmer enters a room, they don't actually do anything if the player is not touching a direction or the jump. So if you enter the room totally neutral, 
You can actually manipulate when the cannons start firing, and this is very important for a couple of these rooms to make it so Glimmer doesn't have to hit extremely tight windows to get out. Ooh, first try vegan pixel. Very happy about that. Yeah, Excellent. Very nice. Good stuff. So, and there's actually some rooms where uh, both these runners will want to be holding a direction out the gate because having the can cannons fire immediately is actually more beneficial for making the room doable. Oh, wow. Very nice. Sneaking through, doing a little bullet dodging. Still, again, for chapter three, how difficult this chapter is, we are still very, very close. And like I said, uh, we won't know what this race is going to be until chapter four. Are looking good. Very smooth through the dream blocks for both these players right now. Looking real good. I like the optimization. This room to breakdowns in. Got it. Yep. Very nice. This is my favorite room in the game right here. Just fly straight yeah. through. Very freeform room. Uh, something the game does not let you do very often. This is a neat trick. Glimmer is going to uh, go down and fit on top of that dream block. That's not intended, uh, but it does make this room a lot less tedious. Yep. It's called Purple Fire. Found my ellipsis over here. Yep. Thanks. Thank you for the reminder. I have, uh, speaking of Purple Fire, I have been under trial by fire trying to learn about 20 different trick names and who came up with what, so my brain is extremely fried with Glimmer knowledge now. There we go, Conch Shell just first oh, try for breakdown. Didn't through. actually get to the ledge. That's the important part. Yeah. Came up just short, but yeah, we should be fine. Yeah, so now the cannons are going to be firing on a much more inconvenient timing for breakdown, but... Not too much time lost there. Sink in between those, nice and smooth. Rare instance of lots of floor. This screen decides to give you floor. This is where all the floor went in chapter three. Yep, all just hanging out at the end. Yep. Everybody wants out of chapter three, including the floor. Right, I will done. take a low nine. That is an egg. A low nine is an excellent chapter three. I will absolutely take a low nine. Especially in a race. All right, then. So, oh. but uh, we could do get a piece of fortune cookie wisdom here at the start of this chapter from our little bird friend who we met in chapter two. Shout out to the speedrunners. That's right. Happiest times are the shortest times. That's Always. Right. All right. So, breakdown is clean into chapter four. Chapter four. Arguably not quite as difficult as Chapter 3 on the whole, but Chapter 4 does have some of the most brutal tricks in the game and also some of the most brutal deaths if you make mistakes late in rooms. So first new mechanic is going to be the feathers. Uh, these operate very similar to uh, the flying mechanic in Celeste. You collect them and then you can fly around. Don't have nearly the same range of movement. And there we go, the Sizzler. So Glimmer can grab onto the wall these little crystal trains that follow around that are your, designed to be one of the mechanics to help Glimmer navigate the level. Uh, you can grab that the same time you're grabbing the wall. Game doesn't like that. And so it just boosts Glimmer out of the way. Make someone's bingo card. The oh, let's oh, go. Let's okay, go. clap everyone right now. That is the electric boosty poo. That is nice. the most difficult jerk in the game right now. Ranks up there, certainly. Very, very happy to hit that first try. That's good stuff. That is a whole lot of basically <laughs> oh. pixel precision inputs and is not easy to do. Also saves a ton of time in that. Yeah, room. it's a good like seven, eight seconds of oh. savings right there. So of course, then we die in this room and basically give it all away. But eh, take the victories where they come. Yes. Semantics. All right, so we're going to set up another sizzler here. Watch close glimmer. Oh, now a skip. you see them. Now you don't. We're up there now. Make a trick. Glimmer just pops out of a wall. It's fine. Oh, I got the sizzler skip. Ooh, very right. nice. Very nice. Yes. Small male pattern baldness spike in that room. Slightly faster than the sizzler. Good stuff over there. And I am not going for electric boosty poo. So you get to see what this room looks like the long way. All right. 
So you can see, since they decided to let Glimmer fly around with the feather, obviously we had to put more hand-drawn spikes everywhere. When uh, Glimmer runs into those uh, yellow-colored boxes with the feather, that disables the feather and stops the flying. All right, 4-2. Four 4-2 two. Four two has some of the flashier tricks in the run, certainly. There's some big gaps we go over that we're not supposed to go over. But yeah, there's a lot of just ignore the puzzle and skip straight to the end. Starting with this room, there's a lot of convoluted stuff they want you to do, but we just fly out. Yep. Later. And there's a male pattern problem to spike. Yeah, very nice. And let's see. Getting all the good stuff here. And especially for all stars, this room is significant. Hoping a casual first try this one. I think we're too low. Start we are too close. low. Yeah, this is a this is a very difficult trick. Give it one more try. This flyer is very precise. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Well done. All right, and into the one we call Money Ledge. This saves like 12 seconds if we get it, and we got it. Wow. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah, this is a game that uh, optimizations are in every single room, just the movement, the sheer amount of, of difficult tricks and stuff. There's a lot of time in this game that has yet to be taken off the board, and yep. you're, seeing, you're seeing why. Yeah, no, dying less is still a very valid strategy in this game, but dying less is hard, so... All right, so we're going to do a little trick here, bounce back off the crystal train. You're not intended to get your dash back there, uh, but... Grabbing the crystal train for a brief moment and not hanging on to it, uh, the game considers that using an interactable and says, all right, you're free to go. Yeah, no, it kind of like locks you into the I'm riding the crystal train animation, which there will get you killed on the spikes, but you can jump off it really fast and get your dash back. Very handy. So yeah, as you can see, chapter four asks a lot of the player and demands you go some very convoluted routes to get around. All right. Nice clean room there for breakdown. I will take up 4.30 to here. Absolutely. Yeah, looking good. All right, 4.3. Oops, oh, so oh, close. Very close. Yeah, oh, on baby and pixel off. All right, so now we introduce the boost blocks. Uh, these blocks, when Glimmer bounces off them, gets a big old boost, they turn red, you touch them again, you die. Uh, but these blocks have an unintended consequence in the way they are coded. Uh, Normally, you just bounce off them and you go the opposite way. If you bounce, you know, off the right, off the far right side of a boost block, you're gonna get bounced to the left, and vice versa. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, these runners discovered what is called vertical boost. You are not intended to be boosted straight up off these blocks that are supposed to boost you horizontally, and it allows for some extreme breaking of the levels. Just over there. Nice. Very, very cool trick there to utilize the block to keep the dash. Definitely not the intended route through there, but it looks real flashy. Affectionately referred to as the electric slide. All right. And now, oh, this room. Come on, this trick. The right. trick with no name. Let's go. The trick with no name. Oh, oh it's close. Very so close. So typically the devs locked up top of the screen very, very well. Give it one more try. Right. Yeah, this but, is a significant time save, but that doesn't count. But literally flying blind. Uh, there is no real cue for any of this. This is pretty much a completely by field trick. All right, Ellipsis, you're our only hope here. You're going the long way? I'm going the long way. All right. I gave it three. Gave him a best. Yeah, of all the of all the rooms I watched these two practice over the last few days, I would say that trick is one of the ones I've seen be the most difficult to get consistent. It's because. super finicky. You can't see what you're doing, and that's a problem. Yep. And because you have full free range of movement with Glimmer, with the dashes, and and the way the game the game is definitely designed to be played on an analog stick. Uh, Breakdown plays entirely on an analog stick because that 360 controller doesn't have a D-pad. I will not hear your lies otherwise. Uh, Ellipsis, on the other hand, uh, does choose to do certain rooms with the D-pad to normalize some movement and create some more consistency. There is the room where the conch shell saves a bunch of time. You saw Breakdown use it, get a double jump, where Glimmer is not supposed to have a double jump. 
and uh, gets to circumvent the start of this room quite a bit. Oh. Didn't get greedy on the train. Good stuff. That is a really long room, and if you jump early at the top there, you have a big sad. Oh. All right, so. Welcome to the Ball of Light section. Yeah, so if you remember the battle line sections from Celeste, this is very similar. Glimmer grabs the, the light orb and then gets flung upwards, gets to follow it around. The difference between Celeste's right. style of this and this one is Glimmer does have to grab the orb. You have to use the button. Just touching it will do nothing. You I'm going go. for it. Let's see. All right. Good luck. Lips is going to attempt the trick with no name. First. Yo, let's Ooh, go. Give yeah, that guy some love. That's a beautiful trick. Good stuff. I love that one. Good stuff. Excellent job. Very nice. Both these players have different setups for that trick, but... Nice and clean there for Ellipsis. Picks up a nice oh, chunk of ground. Gave it back, but <laughs> did get to show off the trick. So as you can see. Yield speed running adage. Lose right. minutes, save frames. Yes. Been doing it for years. So as you can see, this is where we decided we're going to have Glimmer go extremely vertical in Chapter 4. Feather and the light orb. Coming up. So as I mentioned, these rooms not quite as difficult demanding-wise in terms of, of things like Chapter 3 are, but they are exceedingly long, so deaths are very, very punishing at this point. All right, just demonstrated yeah. that in this room. A little bit of hard fly there. Yeah, hard fly. It was hard fly first try. That was hard fly first try. There are too many tricks in this game, y'all. They have fun dams. You, you, you gave me a, a final to study for in one day, and I skipped class all semester. <laughs> well, I don't know whose fault that is. It's mine. <laughs> but I'm going to blame you anyway. Fair enough. All right. I will accept. Excellent. And we boost over. Oop, get up there. There, there we go. There we go. Just, Be uh, those vegan spikes helping us out. Yeah, now here we have to take an intentional death because we skipped a lot of movement of the ball of light, and if the ball of light doesn't come with you to the next section, it won't be there until you die. Yep. So one intentional death in the entire run, but that saves a good, like, a lot of running around in that section. Yeah, definitely. And like any good precision platformer, this game has a handy reset the room option, so it's no time at all. You don't have to go find a pit or a spike to actually make that happen. Ooh. That was not the vertical boost. We did not redline. We did not. Blew the engine. Let's try it again. There we go. All right. And we have one more star coming up and one significant trick that I like to call the Teddy KGB. It saves about a half a second, and I have to go for it or I won't respect myself in the morning. <laughs> hey, that's men, his money. Time is coming up very shortly. Yeah. That's time. Time. GG, very nice breakdown. Yeah, very, very well done. It looks like you have yourself a pretty good run. I am happy with this time, and you are not that far behind me. So. Yeah, no, this has been exceedingly clean. Yeah. So, a lot, lot of places to die in this run, a lot of ways for things to go bad. Both these runners hit some very difficult tricks. Pretty much got to see every notable trick in the game for the most part. Yep, but this is the end. Yes. We're going to skip the ending here. But we do have to watch the credits. We do get an end screen where that'll verify we got 100% and tell us our final in-game time, which is what we use in community. Um, let's see. What First was, try hard fly. What like that. was my real time? Uh, looks like 3550. 3550. Okay, so this is probably like mid-34, which is pretty good. Yeah, that's great. I think our estimate was like 41. Something like that. We found a lot of tech from the time we originally submitted this to GD2. Just a little bit. Three months is a long time in a game when it's You new. found tech today. Yes, we did. Found tech this morning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, practice room tech. We didn't get to show it off, but oh, there is now a trick Ooh. called the practice room spice. But you see Ellipsis taking that intentional death, respawn the light ball. We do get to hear more of the chill vibe music. 
That long fall scares me every time. <laughs> it's a little sketchy. But it's faster. It is faster. And if it's faster, you're required to do it. Yeah, this yeah. game has really, really gorgeous sound design. It does. Soundtrack is, I think, a very underrated part of this game, yeah. frankly. It's chill. I find myself humming these songs all the time. Yeah. Again, I know I've mentioned it two or three times already. I cannot tell you how just absurd it is that the every hitbox is hand drawn in this game. That is not something devs do. Yeah, very clean through the end there. Yeah, and time. really good. And time. Excellent job. Well done. Just in time for the specialist of thanks. Oh, good. So normally give the special of the thanks to somebody on this list when I'm streaming this game, but I'm gonna give the specialist of thanks to GDQ staff volunteers, viewers, our lovely crowd back here. Woo! Special thanks to all of you, and thanks for having us. This has been really fun to show off. Uh, this is a fantastic game. I hope more people start playing it, definitely. Uh, they thank us for playing it. So we would thank all of you if you started playing it as well. Yeah. Uh, so. If you want a tough precision platformer, this, this is definitely that. Yep. Like, so let's uh, see where I ended up here. We got a 34-42. That's ah, great. Excellent. That's yeah, pretty great good time. Got all 35 stars, 35 out of 35, and 38 deaths. Yeah. 38 deaths. And I'm, I'm waiting to see how many deaths that I have, because I did pledge $10 a death. Yeah, so. I think we got the minute or so here to uh, let you know here. Producer isn't shooting us away just yet. So. <laughs> Yep. Oh, we got the nod. We got the nod. We, we go. got it. All right. Got the nod. Yeah, breakdown with almost the sub nine chapter three. That's really good. Yeah, no, these are decent chapter That's nines. a great chapter three. Yeah, 907 I will take, definitely. So, yeah, uh, get involved in Lumio. It's because uh, right now, uh, Pittsburgh is the Lumion capital of the world. Yep. Because the only two runners are from there. So if you would like to expand the business. Yeah. I guess as we're counting down here, a little bit of shout outs to those that came before. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Shout outs to uh, Zoe Tack, only active runner in this game when I got started. Definitely showed me a thing or two. Uh, definitely a cool guy. Fun hanging out in history, watching him play Lumion. Um, and a couple people who were in it when the game started. Uh, let's go shout out to Brian the Drummer and uh, Fanya Tuyan, I think is how you pronounce it, on Japanese restream commentary right now, from what I gather. Shout outs to that guy, the initial runners of the game when there was a speedrun challenge from the devs in month one. And yeah, so the Lumion community has always been on the smaller side. Love to see some new people come in. But let's see what Ellipsis has over here. And then we will just say our goodbyes. Yeah. 46, all right, $460. All right, then. All right, well, that's going to do it for us yeah. here, and I know we got some time to make up, so let's uh, cut this thing off. But thanks, everybody out there. Been a pleasure. And uh, stick around for some more SGDQ. It'll be a great time. Woo. Give it up one more time for a Breakdown and Ellipsis for that great Lumion race. We had a lot of donations come in during that race, but it was, it was like, it was breathtaking. I couldn't even speak. It was so good. Uh, let's, let me just read one real quick here. $134 from Seamus. Cheers from Belfast. So excited for my great friend Ellipsis's run today. The speedrun community has been so important for him and the cause, as always, is great. Good luck to all the runners, and let's break the million dollar mark. You keep shouting about that, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2022, powered by Twitch. Yes, you can cheer for the event name. Of course you can. Why wouldn't you? Um, I'm Cartridge Blowers, and we're about to set up for Kirby Tilt and Tumble. But real quick, my friends, my compatriots, I just wanted to talk to you. It's been a really stellar morning, and I would love to have it last forever. However, my time with you for this marathon is at its end. Oh, oh the tears, they're flowing. Um, but it's not goodbye, is it? It's, it's just see you later. You needn't worry, as I am leaving you in the capable hands of Reliever, one of my new favorite hosts. So you're going to be just fine. You wipe that tear away, kid, because we still have three days of incredible speed runs, and I'm going to be watching right alongside you. So you stick around, help Doctors Without Borders, make good jumps, and let me leave you with a final limerick. We've just reached the end of our route. And Twitch chat, you know that you're cute. I love you a tonny, so donate your money, and I'll give you one final salute. Let's reach that one million today. I'm going to send you over to Spike Vegeta with an interview with our Xenoblade Chronicles runner, NL. Y'all take care. Thank you so much, Cartridge Blowers. Always a class act. Love the haiku, the poem, whichever one it was called. I'm Spike Vegeta. Welcome, everyone, back to Summer Games Done Quick 2022. We are very excited. Kirby Tilt and Tumble coming your way. We're tilting the GameCube. But right after that, the, day blew, the debut, also what you would call it, of the Xenoblade series at GDQs in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna, the DLC, being run by the one, the only, Enel. How are you doing, gamer? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing great. Obviously pumped up, excited to see you run here. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel pretty good about this. I feel like I've gotten pretty good practice in, so as long as the RNG cooperates, I think it will be a good run today. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. I do want to kick it over to social media real quick because we got a very important question from Aries. This is a very serious question, of course. I didn't edit that. Will you pause the run so you can pre-order the Xenoblade 3 Special Edition when it goes up? I'll be ready to do that right when we get a free moment in the run, of course. So <laughs> I look um, over, we cut might, you. It might take like interview. five minutes or so, but I mean, I got, I, got a, I got a pretty generous estimate, so I think we can get it in. Love it, love it. Got to get, obviously, the, the timing of that was kind of incredible. Now, I do want to talk a little bit, again, this is the first time Xenoblade series, the IP is being represented here at GDQ. What does it mean to you to get to be that debut runner? Well, Xenoblade's a really important series to me just in general. I've spent a ton of time with the series over the years. I have, like, tons of content dedicated to it. And just being able to be a positive representative for the community is something that means a lot to me just because I know so many people within the community and I really want to represent them well. And I just want to show that this community is something special because I feel like there's a bit of a negative st stigma around the game sometimes. And I want people to know that these games are really amazing and it has a really awesome community. That's awesome. Love to see, like, the main inspiration. Wanted to showcase that community and wanted to showcase the game. Definitely looking forward to it. Now, we got another social media question coming up right here from Not Terravin. Kind of the same thing I wanted to ask you right here. Uh, you been, they've been with your stuff for years, so here's the question. What's something you really hope you can show off, whether that's a trick in the run or the game as a whole? So this game has a lot of really, really cool fight strategies, but some of them depend on getting RNG, like being able to do certain mechanics to enemies, like breaking and toppling them. And if we don't get those, we'll have to have slower fights that aren't nearly as entertaining visually. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of really, really cool things, so hopefully the RNG will cooperate to get those really cool fights in. There is another thing towards the end of the run where we have to do platforming. Um, platforming in <laughs> oh, RPGs no. is not very good. Yep. <laughs> I'm really bad at it, so I hope I can do that successfully <laughs> today without losing too much time. Mm. Knowing our strengths and weaknesses, I'm sure you'll do just fine once we get there. And another aspect about Xenoblade speedruns that I think is pretty consistent across the series is that there is almost always some really goofy or at least just creative way to gain a lot of levels very quickly because you need your levels in this game or you're really not going to be able to progress some of the late game bosses, progress past them. Does this game have any super creative strategies to gain those levels in a short two and a half hour time frame? So since this is a DLC expansion, you already can gain levels much quicker than probably any of the other base Xenoblade games. They're pretty generous with that. Although most of our experience and levels are going to come from resting at camps, from using bonus experience that we get from side quests, not even from the combat itself. So probably like 25 to 30 of the levels we gain are just going to be from those quests, and we're only going to hit like level 48. Wow. So. It's always fun to see RPG speedruns have to deal with your... You're dealing with the minimum. You need just the amount to just get across that finish line. Seeing it happen, being able to land that plane, always very exciting. I do want to talk a little bit also about, I know this game, this DLC, has a ton of awesome super bosses, kind of four major ones that all have the different gimmicks and strategies you have to right. implement. Do you have a favorite of the group? 
I'd say Mesmer Salak. I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but it's a <laughs> third one. It's, it's the big plant enemy, you know, okay. that one. It's something that you really have to understand the game mechanics to be able to do well because it has a, a move where it'll cleanse like the um, orbs that it has on it, so you can't really rely on chain attacks. You have to be able to use the systems the game gives you, like the break and top will understand how to do freeze choosing combos to be successful against that enemy. So I think that's really fun. Awesome. And I got one more big question for you before I let you get out of here. Again, you are the debut for this series at GDQs. There's a lot of other awesome, you know, versions of the game out there. Xenoblade, you got the Definitive Edition, you got the PAL Edition of that one, which has its own stuff. Xenoblade 2, uh, all the different New Game Pluses and not New Game Pluses. What do you think should be the next game slash category for this IP to appear at a GDQ? Honestly, if it's short enough, I think Xenoblade 3 would be really good just because All it'll right. be something that comes out very soon. <laughs> It would be topical. People would be very hype about it. I'm sure some of the reason why we're getting to see you getting to run this here at this event. Absolutely. And I'll thank you so much for joining me. I am definitely looking forward to your run of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna coming up right after this Kirby Tilt and Tumble run. We're going to kick it back up to the front to watch Swordsman Kirby tilt that GameCube into oblivion. Enjoy it, everyone. Enjoy more SGDQ 2022. Welcome back to Summer Games awesome. Done Quick 2022. So My name's Reliever and I'm going to be your host for the next couple of games. And it's so nice to be here. Let me just say, I came here all the way from Australia. I flew out earlier this month. Is there anybody in the crowd who is excited that we are back live and in person? Because I am feeling hype. That's the way. Guys, welcome back in. Uh, we are currently getting ready for Kirby Tilt and Tumble. We met the, the, uh, the challenge, if you will, and we've upgraded to Warpless. It's going to be run by Swordsman Kirby. This is a very unique run. Make sure you stay tuned in for it. If you were watching the interview earlier, you got some kind of an idea, but unless you've seen it, it you, you don't quite understand how phenomenal it looks and interesting. But until then, I'm going to read a couple of your wonderful donations. We have here... $25 from Maple Magpie, who says, try not to get tilted while you tumble your way to victory. Super stoked to catch GDQ this year. Keep up the good work. Go Koibi. We also have, and, and let me tell you, this is a pretty big one, from Anonymous, $500 with no comment. I do love those ones because it just shows how generous some people are. They don't need a name. They don't need a comment. That's just, bam, $500, right? Right? But for a very good cause, Doctors Without Borders, every single donation counts, though. So thank you very much. Now, we, we, hit, the, we hit the challenge for Kirby Tilt and Tumble. However, we do have a new one uh, for Metal Gear Rising.